Hello fellow map makers, welcome to tonight's live map making session. Hope you're all fine, doing well, enjoying your summer or winter or whatever it is where you are on this earth. And it sounds like, uh, sound is good, that's nice, thanks so everybody can hear me. And the bells of course in the background. Uh, so. Let's see what we can do tonight in our live map making session. I'm Ralph Schermann of Profantasy Software and I'm here to show you my continued work on a battle map showing a hilltop fort that I'm doing for one of my own games basically. And we've done quite a lot last week already on building the hill and the wall around the top and to this week I want to take a look at working on the interior of the fort, on buildings and stuff and doing some uh, city designer work basically and adding detail on that level. If you've got any questions during the session please uh, post them in the chat and we'll endeavor to answer anything or sometimes I can also show stuff on screen and uh, so I hope this will be useful to everybody now in the live chat as well as those who might be um, looking at this video later. All right, so let's see where we are at. I'm here on my, the map where I stopped last time and first off I'm going to zoom out and delete the extra text I've added here just the waiting text and this is where we left the map last week. I haven't worked on it at all in the meantime. So I've um, put in a bitmap to uh, show the original I'm working on. Ah yes, and what has happened now? I've got a bit red X on my map that's because I moved the map into the new, new video folder and I forgot to move my uh, bitmap with that. So uh, I can show you right away. You might encounter stuff like this quite often as well. So I was working on the Hilltop Fortress map here and this is my sketch map that I used as a reference. So I'm going to copy this and I'm now in the Hilltop Fortress 2 folder and I copied my Hilltop Fortress map over there but I forgot to add my sketch. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try I'm gonna reload my campaign cartographer so I'm gonna save this and close campaign cartographer and then reload it and there's my map back. It's the most common cause for red axis in your map is that you moved your map and you have a bitmap that is uh, referencing the map path and uh, then campaign code can't find it and puts in a big red X instead. All right so and here we are see we've built the, the little path going up to the hilltop fort we've got um, the uh, towers of the gatehouse here, the wall, and put in the first bit here of the house, but uh, it's not quite what I wanted with the, with the house. If I take a look here, hide the bitmap again, that house is quite a lot more elaborate than the one I have showing on the bitmap sketch, and uh, it's basically a symbol I took from the dark uh, city Darkland City uh, style and uh, put in, but uh, I want to have a little bit more control and I want to use the house command from City Designer. So if you switch to the City Designer interface here, we do have the house command and we do have uh, house styles here also from the Darklands uh, city style. The different slate roofs here, 
But what you see, it's all black, and that's because we don't have the bitmap fills from the Darkland City style in the map yet. We've just added a symbol, not the bitmap fills, and for the roofs to work correctly, we do need the bitmap fills. So we need to import them into the map. Um, that will also help us in importing necessary layers and sheets that we need because my template I was working on is not set up to use city designer resources or general in general city styles. So how do we do that? We do that by just importing a map in the new style in, into our current map. And for that I'm going to go file, oh no, actually draw, insert file. And I've already grabbed a map from the Darkland City style, that's uh, CA177 was the number of the annual issue. Put it here in the folder so I don't need to go looking for it again, but it's in your program data folder under the annual subfolder. And I'm now just going to take this and you see it's much larger than the map I'm actually working on and just going to place it once here. Hit escape to uh, stop the placement of the bit of, of the map, and then I'm just gonna undo. Oop, and that's gone again. And what it's left is all the bitmap fills that have been imported in the map. And as you can see here, that's the all these. That's the number again of the annual issue. That's all the bitmap fills are now part on this map as well as lots more sheets now. See, and here the good thing is all the new sheets get added at the end of our list of drawing sheets. My border was the last one we had in our current style and all this stuff here is new because that style has a lot of sheets. When we don't need all of them, we don't need most of them actually, the only one I really want is the building sheet because the house stuff that gets created with the house command gets put on the building sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to delete all the sheets again except for the building sheet. Once and then all the ones after the buildings sheet. Delete and gone. And then I'm going to move the building sheet up in my list where I want it. I want it just below the symbols building sheet. All right, here we are. And uh, let's see how we can replace this symbol with a, uh, with a building drawn with the house command. Let's have a look. We, as we can see, this is on the symbols building sheet. One thing I can do is I want to take the sheet effects I have on that sheet and copy them over to the building sheet. Of course, imported sheets don't uh, bring their sheet effects with them. So I want the same kind of effects on the buildings I create now. And then I'm going to erase this one and show my bitmap sheet. So I have the reference there. There we are. And basically you can see we do have two different buildings or actually one building and an extension to that here. And I want to focus on this one first. And then uh, let's have a look and load up our house command. And here we've got uh, the buildings again, slate roof, very simple one. We actually want the simple roof type here as well. And that's basically what I want. I do, don't need the very simple one. I'm happy with the, because I don't have that many buildings with the slightly ragged roof edge. Okay, and then I'm gonna click insert. 
Yeah, Remy mentioned something which I should have uh, in the chat that if you don't place the actual map but uh, just hit escape while you've got the inserted, inserting map on the cursor, you don't get the sheets. Um, you only get the, the bitmap fills, which is nice. And uh, so that might have been better in this instance. But I do did want the building sheets, so that's why I imported the sheets as I did. All right, and now I'm just going to use the building command, uh, the house command, to follow these, this house shape exactly. And then we can see. Or you can't, it's hard to see. Let's make the bitmap a little more transparent so I can actually see the house I've drawn better below that. There we are. And this is one building. I can just use the same as uh, the. Uh, to draw the additional one or I could use in house extension might have a little bit different roof well, let's have a look how this works probably not quite right because it, I do get the uh, this would work better on one of these edges still let's uh, try it out no that didn't work. It's because uh, these house extensions go on the sides here yeah, of the building normally. Um, but I could also use one of the symbol extensions here. No, I actually, it's probably best just to draw a second house shape next to this one. Oh, there's the cat. Hi, other. <laughs> getting in my way again, as you've been one to today. Ugh. Needs attention today. <laughs> so I want to use, I want to place this on the edge of the house here. Do I actually hit the house edge here? No, yes, I think I do. And then up here, see the only little problem will be that I might not have uh, aligned it absolutely exactly. And we do, it's hard to see the, um, the break in the two buildings here, but I have something in mind for that already because these will actually be two different heights of building. What I'm going to do is I'm put one on a higher or lower sheet and I'll do a different uh, shadow on that. So what I want to do is I'm gonna add a second building sheet. Don't buildings low. Move this up and grab the same sheet effects here. Put them on here but I'll make the wall shadow lower to indicate the lower height and then I'm going to move this house here to the lower sheet and there we are and I can now move it a little bit below the other one so we have better overlap there we are but um, I think I might need a little bit darker, stronger glow on the outside of this building so we can actually see a bit more um, of the outline of the house here. All right, so uh, let's take a look into the building sheet and the look glow. Uh, let's make the glow stronger here. And actually I can... Um, just one note why I'm putting in the this odd number 12.5 uh, uh, 
it's a bit of a legacy because this the strength setting just has eight options and I can put in 10%, but it will adjust itself to the 12.5%, so basically 100% in eight uh, different steps. That's why I tend to put in 12.5% directly in there, but uh, we can do it like this as well and make the blur radius somewhat larger. Let's do it. Oh, actually, probably I need to put the strength above the 12.5% for it to apply. Yeah, now I can see now the outline there is stronger. And the same on this one. Yep. 15% and 0.5 blur. Make the blur a little wider so I don't get such a strong uh, black outline. But I like this one. I can see the outline when I zoom in and uh, choose the differences. Very good. So uh, what I can also put on is a, a chimney or two here from the symbol catalog. So let's grab one of the chimneys here. Oh, actually, oh, this should go on this side here. Or oh, I can move this around if I want another chimney here. On this side. But the only problem is they are on a... Um, yeah, they uh, went on one of the lower symbol sheets and I should have first selected the symbols building sheet. So my chimneys actually are on top of uh, the building roof. There we go. Right, so using these um, house shapes gives me a nice little option if I want to add some derelict um, stuff to um, to the uh, the roofs, for example, holes in the roof. Like uh, if I've um, got a bit of broken roof section, I can look inside the house um, and I can do that by simply adding a sheet effect uh, to the the sheet. So say here, um, take the building or let's work on the lower buildings. Add a color key here. Move this up. And now I want to more put in a hole in the roof here. So I'm just going to grab the normal polygon tool, put that on the same sheet, and I can also pick, keep it on the same ladder, a layer, but I do need the solid fill and zero line width. And now I can just draw in a hole here. And the sheet effects will make that a hole in the roof, like this. And if I wanted to put some kind of uh, other floor below this, that, I can do that as well. So if I go back to my floor settings here and choose perhaps a oak floor, and I'll just put this under this bit here. You can see the wood floor through the hole in the roof. Yeah, I'm just seeing I had a question from Bill that I could uh, ch ch simply change the roof texture of the bitmap fill of the addition to stand it out, have it stand it out more, certainly an option. But I do want a little bit of coherency across the roofs here in the map. And uh, so that's why I'm sticking with this one. 
All right, so much for that. Oh, that's the first building done. You see, much simpler than the one I had originally. A few less uh, frills on it. And that's what I want, wanted. So let's have a look. What else do we need if we show our bitmap again? We do have a nice, uh, more ruined building here on this side. And I think for that we do have some excellent uh, symbols in the style because we do have the ruins here. So let's grab one of the ruin symbols or the ruin symbols we can cycle through these this looks quite nice so this would actually work very well actually going to disable smart symbols here because i don't want it to align to any of the uh, edges i have underneath here this also works quite nicely this looks pretty good. It's also nice. Lots of nice all done uh, ruin wall outlines by Sue. And I'm thinking this one here uh, behind is a bit uh, more intact. So I'm going to just put in a roof, uh, roofless ruin for this section here and then put in a more uh, intact part on that side. So let's use this here. Seems to match fairly well. I'm not too bothered about having the exact match of the walls in here. <laughs> yes, as uh, Remy says, so surely knows how to ruin a good building uh, in style. Very nice. Um, but I should actually have a look where I want uh, this to be placed. So symbols should be fine, I guess. And then I have to have a look for the... Uh, I I again, I could use my um, house command. Or I could use just one of the prefabricated things here. Ooh, so I do have the keep. I think I do have ruined key as well, though. Further down, I think. See where that we've. Yeah, we've got ruined keep in here. Oh, it's, that's certainly too large. That's very big. That's nice. Uh, probably a bit too elaborate and too big for the, what I've got here. So let's have a look and see how I can put in perhaps a nice um, version with the house tool. We can use this, but we can also do a bit of a flat roof here. The only thing is the flat roof in this style does have the bitmap fill in the middle as well. Not this one though, but the color is a bit odd. We curve it uh, for wood roof basically. I want that. I could have a look in the settings and see if I can change this to a different flat color. Oh, okay. I've been working on a color palette in a different style. So let's go back here to the default. One. This is a bit too light. This might be a bit too dark. Oh, that was the roof ridge. That was not the... There we go. I can actually, if I want to not use the simple version, go in here and edit the settings here. Because the problem here is that the flat part uses the bitmap fill. So we might actually use a grey stone fill or something. Let's have a look. That works. That looks pretty it's nice. Let's make the color like this. Alright. And then I'm gonna Use this to draw. Yes, that's nice, that's very good. 
might even put in a ruined second story on top of this. Let's see whether that makes sense. Oh, just an idea crossing my mind. Let's turn off the bitmap for the moment. It looks quite nice from the um, the roofless part and then the roofed part there. Let's see whether if, if I grab a simple ruin here. And actually, I do need it on top of the building then, though. Let's do a new sheet for that, because I don't want the big shadow of the uh, that sheet on this uh, low ruined walls. Oop. And scale this a little bit. Actually, the only problem is that uh, my ratio of the size is a little bit off. Let's see whether we can make this a bit better fitting. For that we need to scale this independently. Actually, I do need the other scale a little bit larger, I think. Disable my smart symbols again. Yes, I think that works nicely. There we are. Well, so we've got some ruined walls here on top of the lower building. Good. And then again we can uh, go on and take one of our uh, a opening of here in that roof. Say this would have been the, uh, the stair coming up on this upper level. Oh, actually, but I am on the wrong sheet now. Move to sheet. I need to put it on the building sheet. Oh, and What's up now? Why this is it still a ma the magenta um, polygon? That's because I only put the color key effect here on the building's low sheet and not on the building sheet itself. So I'm just going to remedy that and put it on here. And there's I've got my hole in the floor and now I want to put a stairway uh, underneath that and for that I'm gonna go in my dungeon designer interface and the stairs and then I'm gonna grab one of these stairways here actually I'm not gonna make the arrow that obvious we'll just Make a grey arrow on the yeah. stairs. Zoom in a bit. Put this on here. And again, move it to the correct sheet prior. And this will be on the symbols flat sheet because that doesn't cast its own shadow. And there we've got my stairway leading up from the ruin below on the well from the building below up onto the ruined level. And now I can go in and for example add a little bit of rubble. On debris here, for example, a broken table. There we are. And some broken wood here from the roof. And go on and grab some of the smaller grey rocks. Scatter them on here. And there's my detailed upper, upper level of the building. I'm realizing I actually might be extending a little bit too much over the edge of the wall here for my taste. So what I can do 
I can move the whole stuff. Oops, that was a bit too much. I don't want to select all this here. There we are. So I'm just going to move it a little bit to the lower right. And there's my ruin building here. Next one uh, done. Okay, uh, so again, turn off the bitmaps, bitmap sheet. And I've got some, I've got a more intact big building here, which I can uh, add, um, but I want to focus perhaps on something a little bit more special for now, because I do have these um, uh, dungeons or uh, cells uh, set into the floor, and um, I want to try and create something nice for these here. I don't think I have a symbol for this, it might be, would be con convenient of course. But if I look into my traps, might something not in traps? Not really. I do have these spiked pits, but I don't think I have a round uh, pit set with these uh, with a round uh, grate on top. So we have to come up with something. I don't want to make it too complicated. I do don't want to build a really uh, visible pit below that, uh, but I do want to uh, do... Um, <laughs> Sue has already noted this as uh, something to build for an upcoming uh, style, so that's good to know. And uh, I'm just gonna grab a or do a black circle or outline here. I'll just do a black circle. So I'm just going to build something new on the symbols flat sheet. So we can actually uh, make that a symbol later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out on trap, go on the symbol definition sheet because I wanted it to be a symbol. And I'm just first going to draw a black circle. Go. And then I'm going to put down some uh, simple bars across this. Let's start off with a uh, gray. And actually what I'm first going to do is I think I'm going to... Oops, let's make it the whole length here. And then copy this once. No, but I shouldn't uh, actually uh, do this as polygons. I should probably just do it as lines with a certain width. Let's make it half a foot width. And because I want them uh, orthogonal, I'm going to turn on the orthogonal snap here. Mm, perhaps a little not quite wide enough for my taste. Um, let's make it a little bit wider. So I'm going to right click the change properties button, change light width, do it, and make this 0.75 in width. And now I'm going to grab this and copy this once. And now I want to keep the same distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, but use this as the reference point with the F1 modifier and just always grab the next one. There we are. See, uh, because I'm not worrying about the ends because I'm going to trim this to the um, to the outlying circle anyway. So I'm going to Use the circle as a trim and use the trim command on each of the lines, both on the top and the lower end. So I've got this trimmed to my circle. Now I'm gonna copy all these, move them slightly to the left and change the color of the copy 
to something darker. So I've got a I need to hide my bitmap sheet now so I can actually see what I'm working on. There we are. I can move it a little bit more. Move prior. There. That's all I want for the moment. Now I'm gonna make a rotated copy of these. 90 degree angle and as the center point of the rotation I'm gonna use the center point of the circle. It's a four. There we are. And now I just need a rim for this. So, so I'm hiding all the uh, outlines there. I'm gonna make this a little... Well, let's just have a look. Try it. A four against center point. Yeah, it's not perfect with all the uh, edges here, but I think I'm gonna call it good for that. Or oh, I what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make the the rim wider, so it's gonna ha cover up all my little irregular uh, irregular edges. There we are. And then we're gonna change the color of the outline to something even darker. There we are. And this is fine for me for the moment. I could use a bitmap fills for the bars and to make it more metallic or something. But for now, I'm just gonna call this good. All right, so oh, now I want to make this a symbol so I can place it multiple times or perhaps use this in further uh, maps. And so I'm gonna use um, the symbols menu and create a defined symbol. Where am I? Da up here, define symbol. I'm gonna select all the stuff I have, do it. I'm going to call it circular grate. Origin center is fine. Okay. And that means it's vanished for the moment. And I can hide, show my bitmap again. And if I look into the internal symbols here, there's my circular grate. And now I'm going to put it on let's say the traps or up and down layer but I'm gonna keep it on the symbols flat sheet and here oh, I've got it rotated is the yeah the grid below that is a little bit rotated so normal it's like this here and another one Yeah, I'm gonna hide my bitmap sheet again. And now I'm gonna grab my rocks again and just scatter a few rocks along the edges like in the original map. And there I have my prisoner cells or slave cells, like I think they're in the original adventure on my floor plan. And they blend nicely in the gray of the uh, of the courtyard here, so pretty happy with that. But if you wanted a more uh, black, you could make the lines less wide, but I'm uh, fine with that for the moment. So, still got things to do. So, let's have a look. We do have a few extra buildings here. Let's uh, take a look at the uh, more elaborate or more intact version uh, one first. 
So I want to load up my um, symbol catalog again from the Darkland City style. For that I have to do that manually because that's not part of my template. So I'm just going to go into Symbol Cities and then Darkland Cities here and load up the buildings catalog. See we do have some thatched buildings here that we are pretty derelict that we can use to show some of the smaller ones. But I uh, know I wanted to go for the bigger one first. Let's have a look. We've got the derelict version of the tiles. This is the thatched one. And I don't want it to have the, so this is the aged thatch. This is the aged tiles in very color version. Yeah, I think we might want to use this and use a darker color for this because I want a dark, darker roof. Yeah, let's actually expand the selection here and see what different buildings I have. Do I have something that matches my shape pretty well from the start? Oh, they are all fairly elaborate and I still want something basic. So I might actually want to go for a houseable again. Okay, so um, I'm going to switch to a layer first again from one of my buildings here, or to the buildings layer, and then I'm going to go on my building sheet. And I do need to upload the city designer menu for my house symbol. Here we are, and this time I'm going to go here. Slate roof again, this looks fine. And I'm going to use this to draw the shape of my house here. Ah, what's happening here? Um, if I see placed this here, that's because I've still got my orthogonal option turned on for the uh, snap. So I need to turn this off first and then redraw with a free mouse movement. Go. All right. And now I'm going to have a look what I want to. I might want to put a kind of pedestal around this building here. So let's turn off the bitmap. First, say uh, there's a bit of a step around this building, and for this I'll have a look at what I can do with the floors. Um, I do want to add a new one though, because uh, I need special effects on this, not at, um, edge fade as I usually have on the floors or something like that. So I'm going to just use the floor step here and then take a look at my drawing tools and look for the f go for the floors. Here we have the floor tools. Oh, basement is quite okay. The flex down here I think works nicely. So I'm just going to draw this across here. And now I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow on this one uh, because it does have a height paste, but shorter. Just well, let's take three feet shadow. And then I want a bit of a bevel, a uh, lighted bevel on this one. And see. This looks 
Well, that's. Well, I think we do need the, the other way around. Bevel first. I think the bevel is too too large and strong. Yeah, it's just five feet on the bevel is way too strong, way too uh, large. Let's make it just half a foot and only 75% intensity. Oh, perhaps one foot is nicer. There we go. And there we do have a bit of a platform that we are building is sitting on. All right. So I do need a bit of a stairway uh, to the front of the building. Let's have a look if we've got something in this catalog as an extension to the house. But I don't think so. Um, could use something from the dungeon designer, perhaps. But I think the stairs are not really suited for wide like this. <laughs> Probably some other stairs that w would be more suitable in other fill styles. Let's have a quick look. Well, we've got something nice in small set A. Up and down. Oh, it's all wooden stairs. No. I think I'm gonna skip that for here because building a nice staircase from scratch, while certainly possible, might take a, a little bit too much here from uh, taste of my uh, for the session. So let's have a look and go back to my city style and the Darklands. Where are we? Darkland city. There we are. Buildings. And I did want to use, uh, where's my chimney? Here we go. There we are. Don't need to switch to the other side of the building. No, doesn't want to really. Well, you know what? I'm going to disable this smart symbol and place it by hand. Where you can make it a bit larger easily as well. And another one, smaller one at the. I can use these as posts basically, so I can just add these at the edges here. This symbol needs to go on the upper sheet as well. There we go. The others should be below that, so it's fine. And there's my mo more elaborate building. I mean, the original doesn't show a tower or something, but if I wanted to make the roof a little bit more special, I could go in and, for example, place a one of these on top of that. Well, not those quite as derelict ones. Round one. This is a bit too dark in this uh, variation. There's the ones I wanted. Not the very color ones, but the original non derelict one. But I think I'm going to grab one of these. octagonal versions and I do need to place this on the correct sheet though on small buildings here so it goes on top of the other one and still casts a shadow. There we go and I like that. So just to show that the building is a little bit more special. Oh, but not cartouches, one bit map. So I've got my big building here. 
So now I just need to add a few of the smaller ones. All the other ones are sheds and uh, similar things. So what we can do, we can grab some of the thatch buildings here, partly derelict ones, or I can also just use uh, an extension basically, uh, place it here on the wall. Let's have a look. There's nice ones. Set normal size to start with and then make disable smart symbols. Make this smaller. Or I could just go with the extensions here to make it although they they are designed to go underneath uh, the roof edges of others that's why they don't work as well as individual symbols or we can of course again go back to our house style here and go on the thatch uh, version of the we go, yeah, I'm going to do that and makes it easiest. Go fetch symbol here, one here, and another one here. another one here. If I want to be careful, I'll place it correctly on the wall or close to the wall. So I'm zooming in a bit. And then do I have something actually for this? One of the sloped versions might work quite well. If I take this, it places up on the edge of the wall. larger works and for this this is a bit supposed to be a stone structure I know from the description so I'm gonna take something else again and grab one of these here and then gonna put something Low this one. There we are. And those are my. Oh, I actually might move this a little bit here. To be a bit more in the center of the front. That looks better. And there's my buildings inside the. Uh, hilltop fort. And I'm quite happy with how this turned out. But I might want to add a little bit more texture to the uh, floor, to the courtyard, so it's not all that fairly flat gray. So what I do need is a little bit of outside dirt. So I'm gonna go on the outside gravel sheet and see what I can do to add this to dirt texture here. Let's take the broken up version and just let's outline a bit of where people have been running around and carrying dirt with them and marking out a bit of the paths used here. It looks pretty strong, but I guess no. There we are. That's actually quite good. And I might even want to go in and add a little bit extra variation, so a darker version of this uh, of the dirt. To just put this across this to add a little bit more variation here. Oh, okay easily overlap these. Mm, 
I, but I, what I want to do is I want to make this uh, fill larger again, as I've done with many of the other fills in here. Because otherwise, the repeating pattern is a bit too strong. So it looks good. And now I would go in and start uh, placing more individual symbols. Go Dungeon Designer and grab the let's just grab some brownish pebbles and small stones and these are gonna go on the symbols flat sheet because I don't want any shadows on these. Just add a scatter a few around here. And then uh, grab some grey stones. Place them outside the map. Oh, what? No, something else I could add here, and I should probably add is a bit more floor to the ruined building here because that is probably going to have a little bit different uh, floor style from the um, dirt area around it. So I'm going to go have a look in my fills for the uh, stone areas. I could grab my flagstone fill again or just here the uh, stonework or the grey. Let's let's go for the flat grey. This is I'm just going to follow the outline of the building here. Uh, yeah. It's pretty nice but a bit too um, regular for my taste. So there's probably dirt in here as well. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to make a copy of this. Um, copy prior. No, uh, not the quick copy. Copy and drawing. Um, but I do not want to copy the The ruined walls, I just want the floor. Okay, do it. And I'm going to copy it from 0 to 0 to 0 to 0. So it's on the same location. And then I'm going to change the fill style of this copy by selecting my prior. Do it. And we are going to grab one of the broken up dirt fills. Dirt gray. And three one here, this one. And so we've got lots of the same dirt as outside uh, in here, but a few open areas. And then I'm going to grab the symbols again and add a few stones inside this here. Again, I can go in and say perhaps here's some this is a storage area where they've collected some barrels. Well, it's a bit large for my taste, the large ones, so let's go for the small ones. Here we are. Empty one in between. Sideways one, and so on. Well, these, although these should probably not go on the... Um, uh, symbol flat sheet because these would cast a little bit of a shadow. So what I should do is I should move the sheet by layer containers and treasure. I think this is the only symbols on that layer that I've added so far. Press D for do it and I'm going to put these on the symbol sheet. But if I put one uh, here below the house, the house roof should still conveniently cover this as it's supposed to be. And I didn't, no, okay, I didn't change the uh, layer for this one as well. So let's do it afterwards again. Symbols, there we go. This time we're gonna actually change the current drawing sheet. So there we are. And from here on, I would uh, continue filling out the details of the courtyard. And then uh, I might actually do 
and someone probably not ne next week, but I might get back to this map not to do all the interior detail work that uh, takes too long for a video session like this, but uh, for outside, um, because I want to add a swampy area around the rock, and uh, that might be a, a nice session to do at some point. But next week, it's going to be time for the new annual, I guess, and perhaps after that, I get back to this map at some point. But for now, we're good for today. I'm pretty happy with how my interior buildings turned out. And I've done some quite variations, ruined walls, holes in uh, the roofs of the buildings, a more elaborate structure, some simple ones. Used both symbols and the house command and created some new symbols for my uh, circular grates. So, uh, done quite a lot today and I hope you learned a little bit or at least it was mildly interesting and uh, I'll put up this map for reference again in the uh, video thread on the forum so you can download it and look at it and continue or use it for your own games if you want to and uh, so much for that for to uh, tonight have a good rest of the day Whatever you do, do some nice maps or something else. And see you again next week. All the best. Thanks for stopping.